Hello guys, welcome back. In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to create our own custom Docker images. If you're using Docker to run your Laravel project, then it should be pretty obvious that building your project locally takes a long time. Generally, in practice, a lot of time and resources are lost waiting for Docker builds to complete. If you're employing a CI-CD pipeline, then you most likely will need to have your containers built many times throughout each cycle of your pipeline. For example, building containers to run tests as part of your pull request actions, or building them for deployment to dev, staging, or prod. As a developer, I rebuild my containers many times throughout the day depending on the feature I'm working on. If we add up all this time, then it would be pretty easy to see that we would have lost a massive number of hours and resources throughout the year. This costs you money and less productivity hours. To eliminate your Docker container's build time, you will need to create a custom Docker image. This makes it so instead of having your Docker image build every single time, you download a custom pre-configured base image that would have all what you need installed and pre-configured. For this tutorial, we will be using my Laravel Docker template that I have on my GitHub account. Before we get started, let me show you. This is my Docker interface here. I have no running containers and I have no saved images. So I'm going to be running my project the first time. Now for all the projects that we're going to be working on, I have provided a make file, which basically has all the commands that we need, just makes our life a little bit easier. In the terminal, I'm going to use time so we could record how long it took to execute our commands. And I'm going to run make fresh prod. And this will build all our Laravel containers and will be up and running. Now it looks like our build is done. It took around one minute and 15 seconds. Let's go back to Docker. And you can see this is our image here. Let's see the containers. So I have a Redis container, a database, and an API container. Let's go ahead and check this out in the browser. And it's right here. So you can see here, we have our Laravel project running. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop my containers. I'm going to delete everything. And I'm going to do the same thing for the images. And I'm going to open up my other project. It's pretty much the same thing. It's a Laravel template, but I am using a custom Docker image here. You can see on the top from, this is my custom image. And I'm going to run the same command time to measure the execution time of our command. And I'm going to write make fresh prod. All right, now that's done. Here you can see it took around 28 seconds. So the first one took around one minute and almost 30 seconds. This one, 28 seconds. Remember guys, this is just a Laravel fresh project. So we don't have anything to install really. But on a bigger project, you will see a much more reduction in time. Let's go ahead and open Docker again. And Let's go to our containers and you can see here, I'm going to open this in the browser. We have also Laravel up and running. So both of them are the same thing. Redis database and API container. The API is using PHP, Nginx, uh, PHP FPM, and it's configured with OP cache. We also have Xdebug installed, but on our dev containers. Our first step, we're going to go ahead and pull our Laravel template from my GitHub repository. This has all the Docker containers that we need to launch a Laravel project. Let's go ahead and go to Google. And in here, you want to search for E-M-A-D, E-M-A-D, Zamut, Z-A-A-M-O-U-T, GitHub. You want to go to my GitHub account. Should be the first result on Google. In here, you want to go to repositories and you want to find this repository. Laravel, Docker, Nginx, PHP, FPM, OP Cache. I added the link in the description. In here, you want to copy this URL. Let's go ahead and open our terminal. Let's go ahead and create a new folder for our project. I'm going to call it Laravel-Template. And let's go ahead and go inside that directory. In here, you want to write git init, then git pull and paste the URL. Let's go ahead and open this directory in Visual Studio. Now in here, the first thing we want to do is we want to copy our EMV example file and create our EMV file. So we want to call it .emv. In here, you can see we have our Docker Compose YAML file. We have our API instance. We have our database and we have our Redis. 
And in here we have two Docker files. This one is used for prod and this one is used for dev and local. The difference between uh, this one and this is that we have in local, we install xdebug. Now we also have a make file and in here, it just makes our life easier to run the commands we have for Docker. Now let's go ahead and run our project. So we're going to build our containers. I'm going to write make fresh. All right, looks like it's done. Let's go ahead and open our Docker interface. And in here, you should see your containers. And you want to make sure that it's working. So for your API, go ahead and open up uh, localhost on port 9000. And you should see the Laravel default web page. Let's go back to our code editor. And in here, let's inspect our Docker file. In here, you can see that we're using PHP 8.1 FPM. We're configuring OP cache. We're installing some software packages. We're installing some PHP dependencies. We're installing Composer. Now let's go to our dockerfile.local. And in here, you can see we're pretty much doing the same thing. But the idea of having a local Docker file is you can install like xdebug or other software packages that you might not want to install on your production. So we want to create a base image for our Docker file to reduce the build times. In here, you can see most of the time is coming from the installations. So here, install dependencies and PHP extensions, even the composer. In our terminal, let's go ahead and go back to our main directory. And I'm going to create another directory. Let's call it laravel-template-base-image. And let's go inside that directory. And I'm going to open visual code in there as well. And let me adjust back my terminal. So I'm going to open another one and close the old one. All right. And in the new one, let's go ahead and copy our Docker file. And let's copy our make file as well. And let's add it into our Laravel template base image folder project. Now in here for the make file, let's go ahead and keep the help and just remove everything right under it. Let's go ahead and go to our Docker file. Now for our base image, we want to build it based off the PHP FPM. We want to keep this. We want to also set our environment variables. We want to install our dependencies and copy our configuration files for PHP and Nginx. But I don't want to be setting my Laravel project in here. I want to just have it have all the installations required so it could function as a base image. I'm going to erase everything right under here. So the work directory, the user up to here. So let's go to our Docker file.local and we want to scroll down up to where we have the set the working directory here. Let's go ahead and erase all this. Now let's go ahead and open our terminal and let's go in ahead and build this Docker images. So I'm going to go to my make file and we're going to create ourselves a new command. Let's call it build local and let's add here a comment and let's say build local containers. Now in here we want to write Docker build no cache period. And we want to add a tag. So a tag would give our container a name. Local dash Laravel dash base dash image. And we want to select our Docker file dot local. So we write dash if Docker file dot local. Let's go ahead and give this a try. So I'm going to write in the terminal make build dash local. Now in here you see we have an error. And it's basically cannot copy these files because they don't exist. So if you look in the Docker file, in here, we're copying from our Docker folder the our configuration files for our server. We don't have these here. We just need to copy it from our Laravel template project. So this Docker folder, copy. Let's go ahead and add it in here. And let's try to run that make build local again. All right, looks like now it's done building. Let's go ahead and open our Docker interface. And you want to go to images. In here, you should see it. local dash laravel dash base image. We named it right here through this tag. Actually, what I'm going to do is let's erase these two variables and let's create a new one and let's call it base underscore image underscore name. And I'm going to set it to be laravel dash base image. 
And in here, let's go ahead and use this variable instead. So we do that by writing a dollar sign and curly brackets and reference our variable name. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to add another build command, but for our production one. So this is a regular Docker file. Let's copy what we did here for local. Let's adjust the comments. And in here, let's change local to prod. For the tag name, let's change local to prod. And for our Docker file, let's remove the dot local. Let's go ahead and try that out. So I'm going to write make build dash prod. Now that's done. Let's go ahead and go back to our Docker interface and let's check it out. See here, we have our prod Laravel base image, local Laravel base image. Now, before we use these images, let's go back in here. I'm going to add another command and I'm going to say build dash all. And this one will build local and prod containers at the same time. So it's a cool, this is a cool command in make files. So if you write make and you use the dash J flag, you could run two commands at the same time or more. So I'm going to use two and I'm going to run the build dash local and build dash prod commands. So what this will do is run both of these at the same time. It will save you a lot of time rather than build one and wait for the other. So to use it, you write make build dash all. And you could see it looks weird in here because you can see both of them running the same time. And looks like now both of them are done. Let's go ahead and open Docker. And for now, let's go to our local dash Laravel base image. I'm going to copy this name here. And let's go back to our old project. So not this one. Inside our Laravel template project, let's go ahead and go to our docker file dot local. In here, if you see how we have this from, instead of using this image, we're going to use our new custom image. If you guys remember, that was this one here. So I'm going to add it local dash Laravel dash base image. We already did this step inside our base image. I'm going to remove it. We already installed our dependencies there. We installed the PHP extensions there. We installed Compose there, there as well. And I'm going to actually keep our configuration files here. I want to override whatever is in the base image because this will allow me in my new service in here to adjust the values as I see fit for my server. But I will be removing this xdebug because I already have it installed. And we're pretty much going to keep the rest in here. Let's go ahead and try to run this. So I'm going to write make fresh all right, looks like it's done. Let's make sure that this is working. So I'm going to open Docker and let's see the running containers. You should be able to see this. For our API, let's open it in our browser and we should be able to see the Laravel default web page. Now we did this for our local. Let's do it for prod. So we want to go back in here. We want to go to images. We want to find our prod image and you want to copy the name and let's go to our Docker file in here. And let's do the same thing. So I'm going to change this here to our prod container. Let's remove this. We're going to remove the install dependencies, PHP, copy composer, keep configuration files. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Let's try this out. Let's do make fresh dash prod. And looks like that's done. Let's give this a try in the browser again. So I'm going to go back to my containers. Let's open our Laravel project and you can see it loads. I hope you guys found this tutorial useful. In our next video, I'll show you how to use a container registry to store your containers online using AWS. This way, you can store your containers there and just reference them by URL. They would then be readily available not just for your local, but pretty much any step in your CI CD pipeline. Don't forget guys to subscribe to my channel to stay up to date with my latest training videos. Thank you and we'll see you guys again.